Unity's LEGO Micro Game is awesome. It helps newer developers get accustomed to important concepts and mechanics used when making your own games. In the previous video, we took our first look and walked through the LEGO Micro Game tutorial. Today, we're going to learn all about the LEGO Behavioral Bricks. That way, we'll know how to use them when making your own custom maps and mods in the LEGO Micro Game. Welcome to iHeart Game Dev, my channel all about game development. I want to take a moment just to thank Unity for sponsoring this video and series, and now, let's get started. When making our own mods using the LEGO Micro Game, we will need to build out the level scenery and game design. In doing so, we'll want to add an increased level of customization and complexity for the players of our mods to keep their interests. We can do so using special LEGO bricks called Behavioral Bricks. Behavioral Bricks are unique assets to the LEGO Micro Game that will provide additional functionality to whatever bricks we connect them to. Outside of the LEGO Micro Game, these features would typically need to be programmed through code or visual scripting, so it's awesome that we have immediate access to these mechanics. Now, let's get into the specifics. There are two types of behavioral bricks, actions and triggers. The blue, green, and red bricks are all actions, each providing additional behaviors such as movement or shooting projectiles. The yellow bricks are triggers, which control these actions, specifically when they activate or occur. We actually used these in the last video pretty frequently. For example, we added a touch trigger with the elevator action. The result was that the elevator action only activated when our character was stepping on or touching the platform. To use each brick, all we need to do is select and drag the brick from the project window into the scene view and connect it to another LEGO piece. As a reminder, we'll need to toggle on the brick building mode from the menu located in the top left of the scene view. When active, selected LEGO bricks will connect to other LEGO bricks exactly like they do in real life. Otherwise, they will not connect to one another and will not provide the functionality that we're looking for. When a behavioral brick is selected individually, we'll see in the inspector its customizable settings and parameters. Each behavioral brick will have its own differences, so let's start by taking a look at the 15 actions included by default in the micro game. The Alive action will animate any connected bricks. We have the option to select between Creature or Robot, which will modify the animation. We also have the choice of which audio we want the brick to emit, and its volume. These two parameters are actually on many other action bricks, and for each, we'd want to select the best audio file given what the behavioral brick is supposed to represent. The Audio action can be used for two purposes background music, or spatial sound effects. For instance, say we only want to hear the sounds of crickets around a bunch of bushes. We can use the spatial setting so that the sound gets louder as we get closer. Otherwise, the default setting of background will allow our character to hear the sound everywhere in the level. The control action is used to grant players control over other LEGO bricks outside of the default minifigure characters. This behavioral brick is great if we want to make vehicles. In the settings, we can switch between three different types of movement, direct, tank, and strafe. Direct is the same movement that our character currently has. Tank has the A and D keys rotating the character, while W and D provide the forward and backward movement. And strafe has the character always looking forward, but provides movement in all directions. With the other settings, we can control both the movement and rotation speed of the player. The control brick also contains a parameter for is player. What this means is that the microgames game manager will recognize the connected bricks as a player so it can interact with the level in the same way as a minifigure can, like picking up an item. And lastly, this brick and quite a few others has the collides parameter. If deactivated, this brick can pass through anything, and when activated it will collide and stop against the environment. With the elevator action, we can control the distance and speed that the elevator travels up and down, as well as how long the movement pauses when it reaches the top and the bottom. As previously mentioned, this is another brick with its own audio and audio volume, and similarly, we also have the option to disable collisions just like the control brick. To avoid repetition, these will not be mentioned again. The explode action is such a fun one. Explode causes all connected bricks to violently blow apart. 
We can control how much force is applied to this explosion with the power parameter. The hazard action is a dangerous one. If our player comes into contact with this brick or the bricks connected to it, it will cause our player to explode, and the game manager will trigger the game over state. The hover action is relatively similar to the elevator brick explained earlier. It will move connected Lego bricks up and down. We can adjust the amplitude and time parameters to increase and decrease the volatility of the movement. The look at action will rotate itself and connected bricks so that the eye located on the side of the brick will always point towards its target. By default, that selection is player, but we can also change it to transform and drag any of the game objects into the reference box and it will rotate towards that object instead. With the speed parameter, we can adjust how fast the brick will be able to rotate towards its target. The time parameter determines how many seconds the brick is allowed to rotate before pausing, and pause is the number of seconds to remain still before rotating again. The lose action is rather straightforward. It will cause the player to lose. Like all actions, this can be combined with trigger behavioral bricks so that the behavior doesn't occur immediately when starting the game. But more on that later. The move action will move the connected bricks in the direction that the arrow on the side of the brick is pointing. Using distance, we can control how far the brick travels each time it moves. Time is the amount of time that it takes to travel the set distance, and pause determines how long before it moves again. We also have the repeat setting so that the action will loop over and over again. The pickup action is considered a collectible for our game. If the player runs over the collectible, the brick or the connected bricks will disappear depending on the scope we have selected. We'll also notice that we have an effect option, which can be replaced by navigating to the effects folder and dragging a different effect into the reference box. The platform action is reminiscent of the move action, except it also travels in reverse direction. It will travel the distance parameter's value forward and then return back, with the travel time being the value given to the time parameter each way. And again, it will pause for the amount of time given to the pause parameter. The rotate action will turn the connected bricks on its local y-axis to the degree angle that we set as the angle parameter. As we've seen with similar bricks, this rotation will take the value passed to the time parameter to complete in seconds and pause after the completion for the duration of the pause value. The shoot brick will spawn a projectile and launch it at a custom velocity and accuracy. It fires the projectile out of the hole located on its side. And using the reference box, we can drag in any of the three projectiles located in the projectiles folder. The lifetime value determines how much time before the projectile is destroyed after it's fired, and we also have the option to disable gravity on the projectile. The win brick is the final action brick included by default, and it's just as simple as the lose brick. This brick will cause the game to end and the winning screen to display. Again, we'll need to use a trigger to set when we actually want to use this action. Okay, that's all the 15 action behavioral bricks included by default. On their own, they're pretty cool. But what makes them special is that we can combine them for awesome results. Enemies that follow characters, shooting projectiles at targets, and more. And we can make them even more interesting with triggers. Let's now see how triggers work. There are six trigger behavioral bricks included in the LEGO microgame by default. Triggers control when specific actions will happen. For instance, we noticed earlier that the win action would end the game immediately when we press play. However, we can connect a trigger so that the action will only be called or occur when the trigger's conditions are met. Let's take a look at the input trigger. This trigger and all triggers share the option to target all the actions connected to the trigger, just like how the actions impact all connected LEGO bricks. Or, a trigger can target any number of specific actions that are in the scene. Again, when the conditions are met, the actions will be called, meaning they will happen. For the input trigger, the input setting defaults to other key, which allows us to select which key we want the player to press for the trigger to activate their actions. 
In play mode, we will see the selected key hovering over the input trigger when we get close to it. Modifying the enable setting, we can choose when the player is able to activate the input, and the distance setting represents how close the player needs to be for the input key to both work if pressed and for the pop-up to show if it's enabled. And again, similar to the actions, we also have the repeat option on many of the triggers. This means that the trigger will be able to be used more than one time. If we want something to only happen once, we'll disable the setting. The nearby trigger allows us to choose whether the trigger is all of the connected bricks or if it's just the single behavioral brick itself. The nearby trigger will be activated if a player moves within a certain proximity of the trigger. This value is adjusted by the distance setting. And using the sense setting, we can also customize whether we want the player minifigure to be what the trigger is looking for, or if we want it to be any bricks, or if we want it to be a custom tag. Tags are additional ways for us to identify what the game object is, and are located at the top of the inspector when a game object is selected. In our project, maybe we only want the trigger to activate when an enemy is within the nearby proximity. We can use tags to group all enemies under an enemy tag. The pickup trigger is super helpful. It will only activate when a certain number of pickups on the map are collected, be it all of them, some of them, or specific pickups. The random trigger has minimum and maximum time parameters. This trigger will choose a random time between the two values and activate when the amount of time passes equal to that random number. It's a random number on every repeat. The time trigger is a simple countdown in seconds until the trigger is activated. And the final trigger is the touch trigger, which can be activated either directly by touching part of the bricks connected to the trigger or the behavioral brick itself. With all of these behavioral bricks at our disposal, we have options when it comes to making our game interesting. We can combine actions and triggers to create enemies that follow the player while shooting projectiles, platforms that move in inconsistent patterns, vehicles for players to control, and even when the player should win or lose the game. With just a little bit of experimentation and imagination, you can make something awesome in the LEGO microgame as long as you know how to use these bricks. Next time, we'll learn to create and save our very own LEGO designs using Unity's prefabs, and we'll wrap this series up by publishing our very own mod for the LEGO Micro game. If you're enjoying this video series, feel free to like and subscribe, and if you're interested in joining an awesome growing community, we'd love to have you in the channel Discord. For updates on the next video, feel free to follow me on Twitter, the links will be in the description. But that is all for today, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.